Hello, <laughs> Taja. How are you? Hi. Um, I'm good. I'm really good. I'm really good. You seem very energized. I think I think it's more uh mystic. I'm I, I feel more mystically involved with my work right now. So yeah. yeah. So I think I'm going for mystical. Okay. Like shake your ass. Watch yourself. Like show me what you're working with. Or danger. Hmm. Yeah, you know what that is? Yeah. Do you, do you remember when they did that in the scary movie too? <laughs> When they had the piano with all the white people singing no, it, yeah, no. <laughs> it was like a Christmas carol. Oh, it's carol. so good. Anna Faris is bravo, bravo yeah. to Anna Faris. I she, still she rewatch was my childhood. those movies. Yeah, no, I I rewatch House Bunny and uh, Just Friends a <laughs> where, lot. Where she talks like this. Yes, <laughs> this is my friend Taja. <laughs> I can't even do it. I can't even do it. But what I can do is the forgiveness song. You know, you don't Which know it from one? Just Friends. No, I haven't seen like, Just Friends. Forgiveness is more than saying sorry. To forgive is divine. So let's have a glass of wine and have makeup sex until the end of time. Time. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. <laughs> she has a little twang at the end. Time. That's good. Yeah. You have beautiful energy. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. And okay, who does your hair? We've we've really got to okay, get this. Okay, this is my natural hair actually, except for the blonde. You're a kid. I, I, I was blonde like, really? I, I tip the blondes, but yeah, who like, tips them blondes? Oh, uh, Rob Rich's sister, Liz Rich. No Shout outs to way. Her. Uh, originally, I got my whole head done blonde, but then uh, one day I went to this workshop, and uh, one of the the things we had to do was purposely not dress up one of the days mm -hmm, so that mm -hmm. we can just learn to just be ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That day I just like, yeah, did my hair like, like this. Just like, this and is then, working. And it worked. And then people were like, oh, I love your hair like that. I used to like, you know, comb it over with the gel this and everything. Good. And now it's like. You had a comb over? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I used to gel it like no. slick it to the side. I wish, I wish this was one of those talk shows where you could like go back and like <laughs> you plaster like the old black male photos and be like, let's let's go to that photo. I went through so many photos. I would. I, so oh did I. God. So I did I. Every couple of years, I like redo my whole closet. I'm just like, eh, nah, this really? doesn't work anymore. Yeah, that's actually, that's actually a really good spring cleaning challenge. Well, like, I don't, I don't wear that much up stuff. Your whole, oh, really? Yeah, I wear like I have like you know right now like I have like maybe like ten different shirts I actually wear in total that I actually like you know and maybe like five pants. But then those <laughs> these are new from the last six months, and by the end of this year, I'll probably be over this set of outfit. Oh yeah, that makes yeah. sense. I'm I'm not. I am like that. I like, I'm a peace shopper, so I, <laughs> I'm a peace shopper. No, I'm a peace shopper, so when I go out, it's more specifically to get pieces, statement pieces. I'm very much about conversation starters. So if I have one thing on me that could strike up a conversation, whether it's like you see my nails or you notice how my hair looks, or you notice my shoes, it's just like another way to like open the door to say, yeah, this yeah. is my bosom you of know, my fashion. <laughs> In the men's <laughs> dating world, that's referred to as peacocking. And oh, it's, really? it's a part of advice that a lot of my friends are a lot of dating coaches. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that they tell guys is, you know, to if you want to get conversations going, wear something that's interesting, like a particular <laughs> piece that is a conversation <laughs> starter, like a random pink fluffy scarf or something, whatever. You go in somewhere, somebody's like, oh, Yo. what's that? And then there you go. There's your opener. Peacocking. So, peacocking. I actually learned this. Well, I was reinforced with this principle actually from a finance book. It was a book to teach you, like a financial coaching book. Okay. So I guess this works with dating and wealth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when we walked in, when you walked in here today, you had so much energy. Oh, yeah. And passion, because I can tell that you're working on something that really matters to you. Yes. And um, yes. as somebody who's a professional in the dance industry, who's worked with all kinds of major artists and brands, you've had quite a front row seat as to what the pinnacle the current pinnacle of working as a dancer looks like. And I right. think you see a lot of room for growth and improvement. And uh, you have some observations that I think are very important. Why don't you share those with us? Like, like okay. what is on your mind when it comes to the professional dance world? So we'll catch the, we'll catch the audience up because I know that um, there's probably people listening that are, are not really privy to the dance world or not really related to the dance world aside from like watching social media content or right. TV shows and 
yeah, I, I think for me in my career, like I've been I've been dancing since I was like seven, eight years old in a very serious way. I know my mom put me in dance probably when I was like three or something like that. But I only have memories of like really, really being completely involved with it since I was seven right. and training with a company since I was 10. And then I, oh, so went, you were like training, I was training. training. I was training. Like tra classical training or? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I ballet. actually wanted to be a ballerina. Really? <laughs> funny yeah my uh, parents did ballet. With the my mom and dad both did ballet i grew <laughs> oh, up in that really? world yeah you did yeah how, how many years did you take it oh i still take ballet oh okay. uh, throughout the pandemic i was taking ballet from spencer the burge oh, wow. um he uh, did some stuff with kid pivot he's done some stuff with uh usc and he's an amazing contemporary dance artist and ballet um, training is so good for your body it's so good for you people always ask me like where i get like you know like you know the gun show and <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like uh it's it's ballet it's just like do plie tendus and put your hands in fifth um so yeah but like i've been training since i was like 10 and competing on conventions and workshops intensives going to like summer intensives out here in new york and then when i was about 14 15 i started really going gangster with it okay. like actually like touring with other um well-known commercial choreographers brian friedman to be one of them mia michaels another travis wall another and uh and then when i was about 16 i moved out here and within the first year of my training, this this has a point, this has a point. But <laughs> my first year of, of being out here and going for the gold, I ended up booking with Janet Jackson. Wow. And when I booked, this was like my first professional, professional job experience where I'm touring with an artist, working with an artist, right? Yeah. That was my first artist that I ever worked with, <laughs> which thank you, God, thank you so much for that. Um, but... I'm saying this because when I was training with Janet and touring with Janet and working with her, um, we were always treated with the utmost respect, right? When we came in, there was always an agenda and itinerary. They made sure that we were like, we had all the contracts and the necessary paperwork prior to the job start, that we knew where we were gonna be. Um, like a lot of times she has us training offsite from where our usual environments are. And I was actually working with her in Atlanta Mm -hmm. even though I was living here in LA. So she put, it up, put, put us up in apartments, not hotels. Right. We had our own apartments. And she like, took care of you guys. They were like, apartments. Yeah, like, yeah. Apartments. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, and like we would come in and we would have a, a programmed warm-up and then we would get with her trainer, Tony, um, at the time, and we would do drills with her or even before she, right before she got there, or if she was like busy, like taking calls, we would still do those drills and train for whatever job, like whatever the job was, whatever the performance was, we were training to gear us up for that performance. Like a, like a personal trainer. So yeah, like like a personal trainer would. Like, yeah. you know, strength. Treating you guys like athletes, because okay, so, you are athletes. Yeah, because we are. And so it would be like, okay, we gotta do some stamina stuff, we gotta do some strength stuff and endurance, um, and then we gotta do some speed and agility tests, test the balance, like real, yeah. real, before we even started learning choreography. Wow. And then learning the choreography, with her, she's in the room with us, hands on. If we need corrections, if she is there to be able to give us the correction, she'll give it. It's not like a whisper, 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 tell this person. <laughs> like she'll just be like, oh, Riley. She used to call me Riley. She'd be like, oh, Riley, it's not there. It's here. <laughs> this is, that's, my, that's my Janet impersonation. But yeah, like it was a very seamless job and even though th there were some sort of like uh challenges like obviously choreography was really really hard gildal Dalau was very hard on us in terms yeah. of pulling us pulling out the best and of course if you know the the legendary honoree uh, method that they use where at the end of the day uh this is something that janet's camp is known for at the end of a day's work if you are um if you have learned some choreography, it'll kind of be like this recap where it's called honoree, where they'll call out one of the dance artists and they have to go in front of everybody, including Janet and the choreographer and perform whatever Gil or Janet asks them to perform by themselves. Uh, so without seeing the rest of the crew to 
double check the steps. Yeah. It's like, okay, no, no, no. show us, like, show us song it. number three. Go. Yeah, so, song. Yeah. yeah. If. Okay. Doesn't really matter. You. Yeah. <laughs> Up. <laughs> and, you just, yeah. and we just perform. And, but that environment for me, uh, and again, I'm saying this to kind of give you some context to why I feel so strongly and confident about, you know, my advocacy as a, as active activist work as a, a dance advocate and fighting for other dance artists is because I got the best example as my first example. And then literally everything after that was like downhill. <laughs> <laughs> so like I am at this space where in the last 15 years of my career, I've dealt with some really rocky, rocky and bullwinkle situations. And and now I'm at this space where my attitude is really, I blame myself a little bit that I, I, I did not stand up uh, earlier because I didn't have the business smarts and the street savviness and the just the insight and the comparisons to go off of to really be like, this is not okay. I just always thought, well, Janet, it's just somebody that really respects dance artists and it's not always gonna be that way. But when I started to really learn about the corporate side of the world and mm -hmm. other industries, other, other fields of profession, then I started to like, really like side-eye dance, like, why do we get treated as if this is still a hobby? This is not a hobby. I mean, like, if it is, it's one of the most expensive hobbies in the world. <laughs> and it is. Yeah. But, like, it's more than a hobby. It's a sport. Yeah. And it, it's an art form. It's a performing art. But it's a sport. Yeah. And, and I feel like there's a lack of interest with productions and labels and other companies and brands to to give us the credit we deserve in the form of treating us well and respecting us like the athletes that we are so yeah i, I very um i don't know i'm strong like bull when, when it comes, <laughs> yeah. comes to this like i'm very 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 stuck on making it better for dance artists all around not just with the equitable power because that's very obvious that we need to be paid more for our time and in comparison to our work exertion but it's also the mistreatment there's also a lot of oppression there's also these sexual misconduct cases that are coming out within the convention world the training world like and, and degradation once we're in this field you know of a certain attitude that's like you should not even look up when a, an artist is in the room let alone talk to them <laughs> or like yeah. you know it's kind of this like subconscious uh mind control that we are conditioned in this way to not rise out of this what i'm calling is like a generational curse of culture you know okay so, so just to, to recap what okay. I, I'm, I'm hearing you say so it sounds like in your very first dance job uh -huh. was with janice jackson yeah and she almost like set the standard for you yes for like how good dancers could be trained yeah. and could be treated on a professional dance job for one of the biggest artists in the world absolutely you saw the gold standard because she cares because she comes from the dance background right yeah and then since then you've gotten to work many other jobs with other major artists right but unfortunately the way the industry treats dancers it's like there's a a lack of standards for the professionalism absolutely you know like i like almost like there's a way that you treat the union grip people and the lighting people or whatever right like they have their standards yep. and and the whole way that that works but you don't see that level of standards being applied on the dance side not to say that other departments can't improve either but it seems like the dance one particularly maybe because dancers are very eager to, to jump on jobs with, with big people or because nobody stood up to say this is what we deserve or whatever, right? For whatever yeah, reason, yeah, it's yeah. just there's a lot of room for improvement. So what are some of the key things that I know there's a lot of things, but there's what are the key things, things that, that you see as a general uh, industry practice that, that needs to improve? I would say a uh, number one would be uh, the treatment as an independent contractor. So I'll try and break it down okay. in what I would consider myself as. Okay. Number one, dance is a business. When you get into the professional world, it is a business. And it's a business in the media, 
um, online and even offline when you're working behind the scenes or on screen for something, whether you're part of that, you know, process in the making of to get, you know, the finishing product where you may not actually be the talent that's working and then there's also the the media and the public likeness of where right. you're on screen and you're at the forefront you know um or even the supporting you know the supporting artist to another artist right so for me as an independent contractor i feel that the system has failed us uh, as dance artists i think that in the language of contracts and legal paperwork for dance artists, there's um, misalignment in uh, our our abilities and our likeness and our the support that's necessary to protect us, as well as the timing is a little off. You know, there's a there there was a, there was a majority case of my jobs where I didn't know at the time that I should be getting my contract and deal memo prior to the first workday or start period where I'm to report to set or to be in rehearsal. You would think that would be a standard in any that's industry. A, that's a standard. That's a definite standard. And it goes... Can you get a little closer? Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh-huh. Mm. Mm. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> so it goes like without saying, it should go without saying that this is standard procedure, you know, very boom, bam. Have a contract for your job before you start right. your job. Right. What any, a concept. Whoa, wow, like crazy concept. But like, it wasn't until like I started learning from other industries of like, okay, say you were to hire uh, a, a brand a brand exec or an engineer or a communications manager for a company, right? right? Sometimes those people come from different places and you you seek them out or you pursue them as a company. You need help. You need rebranding or development or whatever. So you ask this person from another uh, state to come and, you know, help, yeah. you know, with uh, developing your company. Right. So you're going to get them all the language, the rate, like where you'll be staying if maybe you're going to be put up and all all of that stuff. All of that stuff is written down and on paper for them to review with themselves or maybe if they have a team or manager that, you yeah, know, consults or, or attorney. Yes. And then you have enough time. And when I say enough time, I'm not saying like 24 hours before the the job starts. Yeah, because people don't understand. In the entertainment industry, you might get called like two days, two days before. before an out-of-town job and they'll fly you out without even having paperwork or race exactly. locked in. Like you'll just show up in another state to do a job where you, you're not sure how ah! much you're going to get paid, where ah! you're going to stay, what the, like just showing up on faith. And this isn't for like an indie artist. This is for like major, major corporations. Artists and major corporations and <laughs> major campaigns. Yeah, definitely. And de definitely. So... You know, for me, it's going back to, uh, okay, I don't know what my con terms and conditions are. And and now I'm comparing everything to the time period we're in. We got to pay attention to the time we're in. We're in a pandemic where you've probably seen a ton, ton of other jobs come up in the woodwork or heard about these mm -hmm. jobs almost happening and then right before getting canceled. Now, what happens to those dance artists? Do they get compensated? That just happened to me today for a commercial. We were supposed to do a commercial two days from now. We've been prepping for two weeks. And I've had crew and, uh, and equipment mm -hmm. all on reserve. And they just told us today, this morning, that the shoot has moved to January. So now everybody that reserved the gear and their time for the shoot, now it's just... Oh, there should be severance pay, right? There should be, but there isn't. And that's the problem. Because sometimes... Even if we are getting our contracts, certain things like this, we're not looking for. Yeah. Because we don't know to look for it. You know, the the liability measures, you know, and that that was actually one of the things that I came out with, like, just recently because of an artist. Um, that That's the name of a number. I won't say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see how I did that? Yeah. Um, but, like, she lacked liability measures for the dance artist she was hiring and then was going to fly them out, you know, through her camp to perform at a casino that, you know, anything could go down at a casino. Yeah. And you're in a different state, 
nonetheless. And you're also being flown out, like not because you want to just go to this state. It's because you're working in this state on behalf of the person that is hiring you, right? So even if we are getting our contract, sometimes the language is not right or it doesn't fully consider the type of risks that we're taking. Isn't there a union for this stuff? There is, but- How does that work? What's crazy what's about an, is it this- SAG, Is it SAG after? SAG after, technically, but what's crazy is there's a lot of this stuff that slips under the radar because there's a lot of more non-union gigs than there are union gigs, than you would think. But especially for a dance artist, there are majority of the gigs that you will have if you work in the professional world are non-union. And and nowadays, like more specifically in the category of new media, which is yeah. this like this corporate experiment that. And it's funny. They're calling it new media. Yeah. But it's bullshit because it's so much bigger than actual media. Um, way yeah, more people. No, nobody's fucking watching MSNBC <laughs> or that. like your parents or your grandparents are watching that. People aren't tuned into shit on TV. Even still, there are there. You would be surprised. You would be surprised. For us, as 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 uh, equal consumers to uh, distributors yeah. that we are, like we are the company and we're also the consumer at right. the same time. Right. We work in a in a, in a market where. Yeah, we have a consumer's stand standpoint or consumer's point of view, but then we also have the buyer's or the seller's yeah. point of view as well because we're part of that com – we're associated with them too. So the way that we take on things, obviously, with the way that we work, like we're not watching MSNBC, but everybody in middle America is still watching MSNBC. For sure. No, for sure. <laughs> yeah, people, but like – People are still but watching you know it. But, you, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you know. You know but, you know. but I guess what I was saying is that new – media when it when if that term was first used it right. was when production companies were saying oh we're making something for web it's not going on tv therefore i'm going to give right. you a lower budget right a lower rate lower standard but in reality we're producing stuff that looks just as good just as good better. and can cross over and it has better analytics because on tv you don't have full analytics of who's watching if somebody's watching it with their grandparents they don't know that it's a kid or an old man or old woman watching, like, right, like new media right. is more valuable to a corporation huh. than traditional media because traditional media only tells you the the household owner, like, oh, such and such owns this house and has the the spectrum bill, therefore that's who's watching the show. I think, wow. yeah, but they yeah, can't yeah. market it directly. But when you watch that same thing on the Hulu app or on whatever, right? Mm -hmm. New media, new media, Netflix, new media. It's it, you know, and what's crazy is I went it. and did yeah. a deep dive on that, like just specifically to find out the numbers of like why why um why Netflix is in the state that they're in in terms of like they're like number one like that's on the top of everybody when they mm -hmm. think about when you think about streaming the first the first thing you think about is Netflix yeah it's almost a given yeah. Because they were they were one of the first. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, like, congratulations, Netflix. But what I was getting more to was, okay, in some of these productions that we're getting hired for and, and getting buyouts for, what goes into the establishment of these rates? And what goes into the establishment of these budgets, right? And I actually found out that Netflix not only covers – the entire production budget for that, um, whatever mm -hmm. that production is, whatever that project is, but then they give a thirty to forty percent on top what of, you mean? of what that budget is. So, say that budget was a right. million dollars, right. right? They would pay the million dollars for the budget, and then they would do another thirty to forty percent. So that could to be three hundred to four hundred k to the production company so as the, as their so buyout for making the thing. Yeah, that's their like, yeah. So fee. that they have less permissions in the you know. Oh, grand so Netflix will say, "Well, own, you'll do the show. We'll own, we'll own it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have most the budget the plus a plus a thirty yeah. forty percent stamp, and that goes to the production company, but not but the not the talent. There's no bonus structure for the talent. And not much for the crew either. There was a big fight in the in the. I, I'm not in the film union, but I saw that they were doing a big fight to negotiate with the Netflix contracts because in the film crew side of it, uh, there was all kinds of practices like uh, like turnovers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. where you'll do like a 12, 13 hour day, end at 10 p.m. and have to be on set at like seven in the morning the next day. Right. These are grown folks with kids. Right. You know, it's like you don't have time to drive home 
We sleep, have something like that. Things. We have something like that in our contracts. It's like 12 hour turnaround. You need to be able to have a 12 hour turnaround. But my but thing there's is there's major films that don't have that right now. It's it's like it's like the the, the major corporations are I think it's hitting the tipping point to where we're realizing like, yo, they're making legit money and now we're publicizing money more than ever, right? Like companies boast about profits. Yeah. I know they've always public companies have shared. This is what we did this quarter. But I think now they're so hype about this film did great because it did a hundred million. Right. Or whatever the fuck. So you're sitting here flashing all this money. It's like word. Word? Word. I was in that. <laughs> I'm not making anything else. I'm not making anything else. What's going on with that? What's happening with that? What's the but solution they, to this? But yeah, I mean, like, well, they could change it. I mean, my thing is, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't make someone or force somebody or manipulate somebody to change something that was already working for them, unless they feel threatened or there's competition which is another the, another aka threat, you know? Yeah. If they feel threatened by, you know, their potential future profit, then they know that it is a risk if they they're not heeding to the concerns, right? Yeah. So, there's not when it comes back to the dance world, there's not enough attention on us or engagement to us in what goes on behind the scenes. Because we're usually silenced before there is an issue, a known issue. And it could be a very big issue, but that NDA takes care of a lot of things. Now, in terms of what can be solved for a dance artist, start learning the language that you want to go in your NDA and start standing against it. Yeah. The things that are not going to work, like selling, selling your rights or not being able to talk. If there is a concern with one of your contracts... Like, let's say, for instance, I don't know, your pay and when you get it. If it's a net 30, it should be a net 30. And then beyond that, there should be interest Yes. if they're late yes. so that they can stay on it. But things like that in a contract will go unchecked, but then we're expected to stay quiet until the music video comes out. Or we're expected to stay quiet until the movie comes out. Or... We're expected to stay quiet, period. We can't ever talk about what we did with them when it comes out. You know what I mean? And my thing is, if you're over there breaching the contract. But then, we got to show up to set on should, time. Yes. But, I'm, but what I'm saying is, like, if you're breaching your part of the contract where you're paying me net 60, that's a breach. Right? So shouldn't that free me up to be able to chat about it? It's a very good question. That these are things that, you know, I'm starting to really take a look at and starting to ask. And I'm starting to um, make suggestions to things that can be done to these contracts, number one, as an independent contractor. And then, you know, that's just one. That's just one zone. That's just one field. That's one one way that I would like to be considered is an independent contract. Another way is I'd like to be considered as an athlete. And there's certain things that are not equivalent to the way athletes get treated in comparison with the way dance artists get, get treated. It does not even measure up. The LeBron James of in the NBA, which is actually LeBron James, does not measure to the LeBron James, James that's in the dance world, which I feel, you know, Lil Buck is hitting that. Tie yeah. Dyes is hitting that. You know, there's certain people within the field I, I feel like are like the LeBron Jameses and the Michael Jordans of their craft. Like, And now to, to be devil's advocate, uh, the corporation could come back to you and say, yeah, but LeBron James is generating more revenue than, but why? than Lil Buck. But then you would have to ask why. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like, it's kinda the, like the, the, the infrastructure of the marketing of that is completely, def completely different. Exactly. Now with social media is starting to change. I think that has opened up new possibilities for mm -hmm. dancers to make more money to now get paid off of their output, not just their input, right, with their reach. But it's just influence. So that's creating a whole bunch of work for us that we didn't actually sign up for. I didn't sign up to be a social media robot. Right. Like I signed up to work alongside with other artists 
to be able to create more, to have more opportunities to get my stuff on screen, but not in the way of new media, in the way of films, yeah. in the way of television shows, right. in the way of things that can offer me equitable power. I would like to see myself, mm. you know, creating a Broadway show. I would like to see myself, you know, being in one or see myself making, you know, certain video games for dance artists from a dance artist perspective instead of the people like Just Dance that capitalize off of us and they're not really dance artists. Yeah. No offense, but No, no. I mean, no, I feel congrats, you. Congrats Just Dance, you're coming out with a new <laughs> a new version of your game. I mean, I feel like <laughs> every industry has these periods of a grand reckoning. Yeah, 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 yeah. And realization of, hey, what have you been doing? And how can we do this better? Because we were reevaluating the relationship between, right. and I'm not a dancer, but I'm involved with the industry, you know, quite a bit, you know? So I think just, I understand what you're saying. You're saying is that like the amount of value that mm -hmm. dancers bring, mm -hmm. even if you just separate the output, just from a pure exertion standpoint. Yeah. And from how hard it is, yeah. right? Like. It's hard to find a top quality professional dancers. Like there's not a million of them. There's not a hundred thousand of them. There's probably like a thousand or two, like a few thousand actually working dancers. But they if don't that. know that. No, no, no but, but I'm saying that like <laughs> there are other industries with like uh, workforces that have hundreds of thousands of people that get treated better. Right. Than like the top tier of dance. I'm saying this to kind of support your point ah, right, of being like LeBron okay, James. Okay. That is that is okay. From a pure exertion standpoint, dancing is hard. How replaceable is a dancer? Well, not very replaceable. I mean, everybody can be replaced to some degree. Like if a headliner from a show drops out, you can put another artist, but they're different. There's only so many people that can dance at a top level. I'm glad to hear you say that because that's not how it's perceived in the field. We're, we're again, it's like these stages of mind control of like different types of phrases, phrases that are very triggering and very hurtful. And one of those phrases is what you just said, but the inverse, that we are replaceable. Yeah, well, I mean, okay, well, I mean, te technically, every, like everybody's replaceable. You know, my dog got run over by a car. I could get another dog, but I ain't the same dog. I know. Right? And I think that like the higher the skill level you go, the less replaceable somebody is. And to have somebody be good enough to perform next to the world's biggest artists mm -hmm. on the world's biggest stage mm -hmm. that make millions and millions of dollars. Like if a dancer fucks up behind whoever, Lady Gaga, whoever, it throws off the whole show. Right. The entire show can yeah. be thrown off by one dancer really fucking up. Yeah, yeah, They have yeah, dancers yeah, yeah. lifting yeah, up yeah, talent. Yeah, what yeah, if they drop the imagine? talent? What if they just what? drop the multi-million dollar what? talent and just let them, let, let, let them fall? What? Have we right? seen that? It's like... Have we seen that? It's like they are so <laughs> close to the, um, to the main product. Right. You know? Right. Like when somebody's dancing with Beyonce or with whoever, they're right there. Right there. Right there next to her. They're not deep in the background. They're right there. So to be that close to the main product, but be treated as so I bet you it would be like such a, sorry, I'm going to interrupt yeah. you, but I think it would be such a interesting experiment, not telling any dancer to do this, dance artist, <laughs> but it would be an interesting experiment to see what would happen if those people started messing up on stage. <laughs> like yeah. right next to the artist, like, ah, drop the mic. <laughs> Yeah, or just in the middle of the stage, or just, or just, or just, just take a knee mid show and just hold it for like all the songs. Oh my god! <laughs> it's oh. like then people will see real quick <laughs> how how god. replaceable. Yo, that would be are. such a great boycott. I mean, not boycott, strike. That would be such a great strike if if we had this like flash mob experience. You know how they used to do yeah, flash yeah, mob yeah. and stuff uh, like that. But if we had like a flash mob experiment, like people that got process. got treated bad, you know, on jobs or were not paid right and actually like took yeah. it to the management and the management was like, No, we're not paying you more, no, we're not protecting you or whatever. If like right when you got on stage you like just messed up the the performance yeah. and just took a knee. Well, yeah, I, I, it's, it's funny because it's like, you know, you could have a $100,000 car, but there might be a $100 wire mm -hmm. that if you took that wire out, the whole $100,000 car doesn't work. Like the thing that connects the, the key to the thing that turns it on. Yes, yes, That cord yes. may only be 100 bucks, but it makes the whole car go. Right. So if you cut that, oh, the, no more expensive no car. No more expensive right? car. Right? And I feel like um, it's such a complicated issue because 
I'm sure it's a mixture of selfishness, yeah. a mixture of incompetence to a grand level, of ignorance, ignorance, of people just looking out for themselves, right? If they're like a production manager or a supervisor, like like who's like in charge of the budget? I'm sure some of them are assholes. They're just like fuck the dancers. Others are just like, eh, whatever. They're happy with it. Let me focus on this and focus on what I got to do. And I think it's not until people stand up and say, no, 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 no. Right. We're an integral part of this operation. Yeah. And we like doing it, but we deserve to get paid. And it's not like everybody's not getting paid. It's not like everybody's getting no contracts. I'm sure the lighting director has a contract or maybe right. not. I don't know. But there are certain high up people like the executive producer of the concert had a contract. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Right. Like the, like, like, like the, the, the companies that rent the, the trust and the lighting and the staging, yeah. they have a contract because they have a truck that's about to go out of town and go on tour. They have paperwork. They have to. They so have why to. not? And they have the to contract the artists and they have to mm. supply the artists with liability paperwork. Especially now, after Astro World, it would be who of you <laughs> to make sure you have liability measures in place. Because if something like that happened again, no, nobody's surviving that. Do you think that it also speaks to a, a, a greater, for lack of a better word, sloppiness that just comes with the music industry particularly because I feel like the TV industry m m tell me if I'm wrong does the TV industry treat dancers better than the music industry no 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 not at all no so you show up to set for like a major TV show at like Universal Studios and I not have a contract I had a friend show up yes that is happening really? yes and, or it happens that day there's millions like I've been I've done around seven to 10 award shows within uh -huh. my 15 year career. And literally almost every time I'm getting the contract the day I perform. The day. So you've already been in rehearsal. I've already been in rehearsal. Like literally I'm sitting in the audience where I see this is, for this like is where the Drake, this whatever. is where Drake yeah, yeah. is going to sit. Yeah, this yeah. is where Kanye is going to sit. And this is where I sign my contract. <laughs> yeah. And fill out my paperwork. Yeah. Yeah. That that almost doesn't even feel real. Like it's not. It's not real. It's very rude. That's what it is. It's very rude. I just think I just think there's so many things wrong like on on that level, on the on the independent contractor level. It's just totally bad business, completely all the way around. And we like I grew, I said this like a couple days ago to one of my friends that you know it's really interesting that they raised us with the next person will replace you if you don't know how to do a b c d e f g like we grow up in our training fields of dance and we're told you should be able to do anything that that choreographer or director asks you to do. So they so expect they ask, the most out of you. They expect the most out of you. So then it translates somehow in our mind to if, I, if I'm asked to do my own makeup, I can do that. If I'm asked to do my own hair, I can do that. If I'm asked to reverse it like two seconds before we tape, I can do that. If I'm asked to go in the back all of a sudden when I've rehearsed in the front, I can do that. Like there are all these things. And if we're not complicit or we cannot or we're not equipped, then it goes back to the you're replaceable. So we have built in this system or this mind control inside our brain or this trigger that's telling us you need to step up to the plate. Right. Because if you don't, someone else will and someone will take your place. But what it what it what would have been nice. I was like, imagine if. We grew up knowing, learn multiple skills because if you can do that, you can make more money. If that was the way that it was postured or positioned to us, then I would have been like, okay, I can do my makeup now. Let me see what these makeup rates are. Yeah, I can do my can hair add now. To the rate yep. Instead of just having it be assumed my... that you can save it. Because otherwise, you're saving the production company money. Exactly. Like if I'm doing a music video and I have to hire you as a dancer, a makeup artist is at least, you know, three, five hundred bucks a day. So I'm asking you to do the makeup. Technically, I'm saving money. You're saving somebody so, money. So and that's I valuable. could, I could, I could, you know, compete with the market, you know, or I can equal out, be the equivalent to that market, right? right. And either way, it should be able to play in my favor. If uh, 
you know, makeup artist costs 350 to 500 a day, which my sister's minimum is like 1500, like yeah. 750 to 1500. Yeah. Th that's where she I'm talking starts, about the, the smaller indie videos and, that I do. <laughs> even, even the smaller indie videos, <laughs> yeah. like we're looking at 250 a day yeah. to 500 a day. That's yeah. still an extra rehearsal day rate, which yeah. is actually very low. Yeah. But in the same, and really when you look at that and you're like, a makeup artist can make 250 for an eight hour day and literally just paint faces and I can make 250 in an eight hour day with exerting myself and doing like literally a hundred percent high athletic training for eight hours a day really seven hours if you have a lunch break but still but the still, level of exertion the level of exertion compared to an athlete athletic training is four to six hours max a day they do not overexert athletes right. and when you're an olympian obviously or you're you're at a high level of performance in the nba or the nfl or nhl or whatever then what you do is you train in the morning for yourself then you go to practice you train for like two hours three hours maybe four hours and then maybe you finish off with a training you know, yeah. you go back to the gym at some point and then you do like some sort of cool down. And it's and like designed. Yeah, it's designed and it's spaced out. So it's like two hours or to three hours max of high productivity. Yeah. And then you get a break. Right. Whereas for us, if you look it up on Google, we, they can work us. Cal we are compared to California labor laws. We're given, we go to CAB5 or whatever that's called and we can be worked for up to six hours before we get a break. And we can only, we can be offered at a minimum 30 minutes. So we only go on break for 30 minutes after, after high six intense six hours training. of like. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, going back to, you know, what if we were told when we were younger, yeah, learn as many skills as possible because that makes you more valuable then I would have already had makeup rates prepared, mm -hmm. hair rates prepared, or reimbursement of the hair because wardrobe, some jobs they have us in. wardrobe rates, like wardrobe rates. And I would have I would have been in a space where I could be assertive enough to ask for a holding fee deposit because that's what wardrobe stylists get. Yeah, they have a holding fee for the first day of work so that they can shop the outfit. Well, isn't doing a skeleton crew the same thing? I'm shopping the choreography. You know, as you say it, it sounds so like, of course it should be that way. Yeah. Like, it's silly to think that it isn't. <laughs> like, when you say it out loud. <laughs> it's like, I'm not laughing, but I'm laughing. It's, it's you know, like, like it's, some of the most important funny. things are so simple that, that we forget how... He's like, yeah, treat us right, pay us on time. And, and you actually make more money because then you'll have happier people working for you. I think what wow. pe most people fail to realize as a company or label is that Jeff Bezos actually caught on to is that you treat your staff well and you exceed expectations and they will invest more into your company. Mm-hmm than they ever would with anybody else. Yeah. 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 Well, they, it's crazy. They, they say the, the employees of a, of a company are the number one client. Boom. Take number care of the one consumer. first. Yep. And then they'll take care of the people. Absolutely. Yeah. They'll support. They'll support their own. They'll be like championing it because they're like, look at me. This is the company I work for. We could be doing the same thing. So... What do you think are the next steps well, for this challenge? I think that getting on the same page is the number one. I always say that, that we're, we're, we're so many sub-industries within this industry, like sub-fields, that we don't collude with each other. We don't collaborate with each other enough. We don't talk with each other enough. And a lot of that really is because we don't have a lot of places to congregate together where we're all in the same place at the same time or there's not enough platforms that champion all of the industries at the same time and allow for us to be respected in a way where we're invited and included like 
if you think about like the Emmys, right? For the Emmy Awards, they have like multiple ceremonies and not all the ceremonies are recorded. Right. There's the Emmys that gets recorded that everybody sees. Which has the celebrities getting their awards. Exactly. But then the people that are maybe behind screen or off camera or even just people that are on camera that don't, they don't feel need any yeah. respect. They just don't uh, air those. They don't air those. And that's 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 a problem. Like there's choreographers getting nominated for Emmys and they don't get to walk the stage. They don't get, get to have their acceptance speech televised before the people. It's just, oh, you got the Emmy. And there's no Oscar for best choreography, is there? Not that I know of. That's not a category. No. I don't think so, is it? No. I don't think so. And I don't think that's for, insane. for Grammys either, but like in the, like there is best video. It's insane that there's no choreography for the Grammys. Because so much of music has dance. There More is than anything. For the, there is for the VMAs, but again. But, but the Grammys is the most official one. Right. But then again, with the VMAs, unless the artist personally invites you to take the stage with them, you're not invited to that either. And you may be working the VMAs. You may be at the VMAs. You may even be sitting with the artist for the VMAs. But you ain't going on that stage. <laughs> That's so trippy stage. to me. Yeah. That's so trippy to wow. me. Like they have best mixing, best sound design, best wardrobe, right? Best cinematography. Yeah. Why not? Be best like, choreography, be best camp, best touring camp. Oh my God. Why that hasn't that been one? Best. It seems so simple. 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 Like why is it? Most viral dance artists of the year. Yo, what, where's that? We have we have influencers getting nominated for like Nickelodeon awards and stuff like that, right? Like Kids Choice. Yeah. We have influencers getting nominated before we get nominated. There is a huge problem. There's a huge. There's so many setbacks. Like I even heard from like uh, Kevin Stay. He's like one of Madonna's dance artists, and like literally everybody else, he danced for everybody growing up. Um, he's one of my favorite dance artists. And um, he was telling me that stunt performers and, and dance artists used to get paid the same in the 80s. And now stunt performers get paid almost four times more than a, a dance artist would on set. Movies, television, whatever. Wow. Do you think there is a, a lack of a, of a sense of worth within the dance community, the mindset? There's a lack of a sense of self-worth? Yeah, because... Again, you have to think about how we were raised and also how we were briefed into uh, or conditioned into the professional world. We, it's not like, I'm not going to say it's not like we didn't have a choice because there's always knowledge. There's always a book. There's always a manual. There's always a mentor. But we're always told, you know, like, what somebody was told <laughs> it's not like they actually went out and found out for themselves they found out from experience of somebody else telling them this is just how it's how it is there's no official class to be in the industry you know like when somebody is going to college to be a doctor no the, there's not th th there's expectations you right. know that you have to do a residency you have to do this like the like the, the 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 map of mm -hmm, becoming mm -hmm, a professional mm -hmm. doctor mm -hmm. is laid out. You know you're not going to make money for this time, and then you're going to get over here, then you can make this much, then you need that. For the entertainment industry, it's like, I don't know. Hopefully you get picked. And if you get picked, you better be happy you're here. Don't ask me any questions. It's like, and no, it's just a free-for-all. I wish, I wish, I wish the, the, the culture would pay more attention because to really be honest with you, in all that I've learned, even through like this advocacy as I've like spoken to other dance artists around the world, it is so much worse, number one, by the way, uh, in other countries. Um, it is way worse than how we have it in LA and it's already bad in LA, but it's way, way worse everywhere else. And what I'm learning is we have an untapped market in front of us. And all we're really asking silently or subconsciously or indirectly or we're trying to incept this language is that if you just respond to us well and treat us well you know you could be like 
a serious millionaire, <laughs> like serious billionaire, because it's untapped, you know? What do you mean? What's untapped? I'm not going to even, I'm not even going to share it because I don't even feel like <laughs> people deserve to know, you know, like really deserve to take advantage of us in that way unless they're really going to do the work to get there because there's so much that we need help with. There's so much we need help with. Starting from contracts, ending with, you know, the pay, ending with, you know, the the amount of lack of uh, documentation, lack of equity, really lack of documentation. That's a huge part or a huge majority of our downfall is that there's no record of us, to be honest with you. Other than like IMDb, if they happen to put you on there, if they even include you If they you on the happen list. to. If you look at my IMDb, it says I was in Work It. I was not in Work It. <laughs> 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 I was not in that movie. Why am I listed for that movie? It's just improper information, misinformation. And you're giving it to my people. Like you're giving it to my community and like our community. Cause it's your community too. It's just like the, the, the tap in of just simply taking out the time to give us credit for our SEO, to just name us in the music video. I'm in the most, the, I guess Rolling Stones voted. It is the best music video of all time formation. Right. But in no way am I getting that appreciation even though I am listed in the credits, I will say that Beyonce did list us in the credits, but it's not like you can go back and say, if I were to type, type into Google, I could, I could see a Wikipedia where they said I was in this music video, this music video, this music video, this music video, this live performance, this tour, this, this, like this class. You're saying that doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. Like a database of credits. Database of credits. Because if I were to type in, uh, you know, an, an, an equivalent, like let's say a major cinematographer. Yeah. Right? You're a major dancer. You work with major Antoine artists. Antoine Fuqua. Right. If I type that in, I would see everything he's all done. All of his stuff. All of it. You would see all of it. So I think that. Wow, I didn't even think about that. Just from like a search engine Even a grip. Equity. Type in a gaffer. You're fine. All of it. All of his production credits. You know, I looked up... Um, you know the movie uh, La La Land? Yeah. So Mandy Moore choreographed mm -hmm. that with a, a lot of other associate choreographers. Yeah. And um, somebody put me onto this. Jordan and Aiden uh, from Jaw Collective, they choreographed for Half Alive, which like they're amazing choreographers, yeah. really amazing choreographers. And that's like one of the best jobs I've ever done is to work with them. Um, but he put me onto this and he was like, go look up, go look up La La Land and try and find Mandy Moore. Wait, 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 you're kidding me. <laughs> bro, no, bro. When it's not I even say, like on IMDb? It's on IMDb, but it's under a subcategory that says miscellaneous crew. Oh, you gotta be shitting The me. head choreographer of for a movie La La that's La all about dance. Of the movie that's all about dance. Okay, Ryan Gosling. Emma something. What's her last name? Forgot. Let's see. I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> There's so many Emmas. Emma. It's not Watson. Is it Stone? Stone, Stone. Stone. Okay. Thank Stone. You. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to put some respect on her name. <laughs> Emma Stone. And it's Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. And the choreographer. Is under miscellaneous. Is under miscellaneous crew. And not just at the top. She ain't at the top. She like number 35. With, with, with crafty. Next to crafty people. Oh, my God. <laughs> the lady that brought the sandwiches and the one who <laughs> choreographed everybody. Mike, Mike. Yeah, put them in the same. Yo, yo, yo. Sorry, my <laughs> mic went out. My mic went out. My mic went out. My, uh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm dying. I'm cringy. So, so, I'm so crying I know you're limited on time, but I, there's so much I want to talk oh to you about. Oh, my God. There's so yeah. much I want to talk to you about. I might okay. have to come back. Yes, we're going to do part two. <laughs> we got to so, do a part two. So, okay. Here's my, my <laughs> takeaway from what you just said. And, and I agree with you because, you know, my parents were both dancers, ballet dancers and choreographers. Yeah, yeah, so I grew yeah. up in the, I have deep respect and love for, for the industry. And I agree. I think dancers add so much value, just even 
as dancers, but also as many other things. As actors. Because people don't know <laughs> that dancers end up low-key helping on so many parts of the jobs. Yes. Dancers end up helping the artists get swag. They end up becoming like movement coaches for them. They end up helping. A lot of times the choreographers have the dancers help them choreograph. Even body you doubles. Know, body doubles. Uh, like they end up with creativity. They end up becoming lighting directors, creative directors, cinematographers, photographers, designers, wardrobe people. Like a lot of dancers have other talents as well yeah so much value that they can bring not to mention the fact that just dancing alone if they did nothing else dancing alone is an incredible talent yes it's very hard on your body it's a major sacrifice it takes years to get that good and you have and to you, maintain and you it. can only be that good for so many years you can't be that good when you're 50 you know what i mean so it's it's limited time giving your prime years to be underpaid and underappreciated it's just and then you have to like it's, find something else. There, there, it, it, there's so many people that I feel very sad about. And that's what like I'm doing this, not just for the people that are currently working in the field. As an advocate, I'm doing this for the future generation of dance artists that are training and aspiring to become professionals and think the way that I thought, which was I just got to get here, like in my prime. And I'm going to be making good money and I'm going to be respected and collaborating with other recording artists like I'm an equal. Now I am doing that. I am doing that, but the money doesn't equate to it. So I'm breaking my back for these opportunities that should really, at this point, I should be in a stage of my career where I'm doing this stuff as a passion project. You know, like I just wanna work with you. Or I just wanna <laughs> get in the studio with you. I just want a session with you. Or let me come to your album release and let me just like, bless the stage for you you know i should be at that stage and i'm still at a stage where i would love to bless people and do the thing for the homie but then i also have to back it up with like five other jobs to be able to support to be able operation. to support that operation yeah and, and and yeah i just think i forgot what i was going to say before but like I'm doing it, that's what I was gonna say. I'm doing it not just for the people that are aspiring to get to a level where they feel like they're gonna be okay, which we're not okay. And I'm doing it for those people that are veterans and OGs that I grew up watching that I'm actually seeing them still live check to check or they have to find a whole new craft. Like I have I have choreographic legendary friends that are, are like not able to pay rent next month that have created major pieces that of if, culture i yeah I, I mean like you remember you remember dave scott right yeah. uh that you remember the whole thing that dave scott got a brain aneurysm yeah i remember seeing that and and, and then you saw the gofundme to raise money for his operation and surgery right because he didn't have the insurance and he's made like the biggest stuff he for the biggest was people. the 2000s he was the 2000s of all dance movies to see somebody like him be at a state or stage where he can't pay for his own operation. And this is not to put him on front street because he worked his butt, his behind off, and he continues to work his behind off. That man should have a mansion. And what's trippy is that choreographers make the artists look fantastic. Sometimes because they are the artists. They are the artists because, because the artists, you know, granted they can sing, some of them write their own songs, some of them don't, whatever, right? They have their talent, let's acknowledge that. But also a major part of what makes these artists look so bigger than life is how they move. Mm -hmm. They move like stars. Yeah. Well, they weren't born learning how to move that way. No, Somebody not had, all. Not all of them, some. Some. But even the ones that are, they had to train with choreographers mm -hmm. to get that way. Mm -hmm. Dancers don't just walk, wake up performing like that. There are people in the dance industry that make these artists that fantastic. Right, right. And for them to be left behind, is it's pretty sad. So, I mean, in, I, I wish I had more time to talk to you today. So, in closing, if we could just hit bullet points. Okay. Okay. Bullet points. If you could wave a magic wand, things that could improve, right? We have Mine. contracts. Yeah, contracts. Right? In the form of A, don't give people contracts the day of a job. <laughs> and even when you do give them contracts... Make sure the language is right and, and, and actually fair. look and fair. Fair is good. Fair is good. Okay, that's that would be one. Proper credits. Proper credits. Which seems insane. Which, by the way, I have to shout out uh, Will Smith on 
Instagram who always credits his photographers. Mm-hmm. He has a bunch of like indie photographers and videographers shoot oh, stuff for him. And he always says, oh, yeah, Johnny such and such shot this for me or whatever. Like he's a major star and he gives credits because so many times even as a director, I've done music videos and they don't the artists don't tag you. And they're yeah. just like, well, look at this, our, our stuff. OK, so we have contracts. Contracts. We have credits. Credits. Payment. Which is something everybody fights for. But in this case, I think you can make a really strong case that you shouldn't be getting paid as much as like catering when you do a lot more. Way, way more. Way um, more. Um, I definitely, I think I talked about like the the amount of work exertion yes. as an athlete. Almost so, like a so standard the consideration of, yeah. of it, it really is, we should be having like, you know, more, uh, uh, catered custom workouts, you know, warm ups, prep time. When, cool we, when we're coming in for rehearsal, you know, they should always account for the first 15 to 30 minutes. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes, it can be 15 minutes. You can warm up in 15 minutes. Yeah. But that first 15 minutes should really be rehearsal prep time. I mean, like rehearsal, like, yeah, like prep time, warm up time. And the last 15 minutes of a rehearsal dedicated to cool downs and that's not just for the production it's also for the choreographers that are working the jobs even that, the would, artists, that would go a long the way even dance, the artist yeah. if the artist is going to dance giving that the amount of time is not just go 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 i've had to check some choreographers sometimes in in rehearsals where they're like okay you guys ready like right after we arrive <laughs> <laughs> like no bro i'm an athlete <laughs> yeah. but like yeah like things like that and i definitely feel that um just having the proper equipment like there's a lot of times where i come to rehearsal and i'm i'm bringing my roller or bringing my theragun or like you know <laughs> i'm seeing my friend bringing her roller her theragun her kt tape her all yeah. that stuff should already come as part of production that that should be like with your crafty yeah. and waters like it's not, you it's need not like it's ath- expensive it's not like you're asking tools. for like some major machine that's no. like so bougie it's like no this is stuff like you can basic. do with a hundred dollars yeah you can have all that equipment and you can reuse it and you can sanitize it for every rehearsal that we do yeah and just have like a simple mat rolled out with all of those tools and then be able to organize that for us so that we can actually do it and while you're at it, you can take out the medic that's only going to give me the ibuprofen that I can get from 7-Eleven. <laughs> you could definitely replace that with a medical specialist team or a medical specialist person. Or like a PT? A, yeah, a medical specialist person. Somebody that probably is great with you know, acupuncture, chiropractic, sports therapy, massage therapy, and then can can give us lessons or assignments or some tips on injury prevention or give us a proper work evaluation because that's what happens for athletes. Right. Like if you're a boxer, before you start like going into your trainings and stuff like that, you have a work evaluation. Yeah. <laughs> Soldiers have the same thing, you know, and, and athletes, Olympian, ath- Olympic athletes, they have the same thing. They go through like a, a body evaluation and some of them, like some certain sports go through like psych tests to make sure you're good. Like I think football players have to do that. That's what's crazy about this. You're not even asking for things that are like above and beyond. You're just saying, hey, put us at least at the standard, standard. of these other ones. The standard these of other... other athletes. Yeah. That's the standard. And the things that we're doing, it's like it goes past. Mm-hmm. You were saying like there's not enough people that – um that appreciate like our our time and like there's not a class that you can take to learn how to appreciate the business and appreciate the industry or to be given the proper protocol in order to make sure that you have everything you need not just on a physical level like th- that's the the least <laughs> of like really the least of what we do is on the physical level even though it's the most of what you see it's the least accountable part of what we do. Yeah. We are doing some spiritual stuff here. We are yeah. doing some emotional and mental stuff here. Why do you think we can memorize stuff? It's all in the mind. Yeah. Why do you think that we take on other characters? It's emotional. We really dive into, you know, our work. And I think that there should there should definitely be a level up. Level up, <laughs> level up. <laughs> oh my God, I, yeah. there's so much to talk about, but I'm really glad that you're bringing this up. I'm glad that you're speaking up about this because 
I have such a deep respect and love for the dance world and in all its different formats. And I agree. I think dancers are superstars. They're, they're like superheroes, super athletes. Because it's not just physically hard. It has to look beautiful. Yeah. It doesn't matter how you look when you shoot a three-pointer yeah. as long as the ball goes in the hoop. Absolutely. When, when a dancer, it's a style. Yeah. Like you don't get extra points for style in basketball. You know, like the score is the score. But with dancers, you have to memorize, you have to execute and look good and have a smile on your face. And it's the and it can be the way that you look good. That what you were saying earlier is the way. Like, yeah, you can actually quantify dance if you want to say that we're replaceable. Then that means that you can't quantify dance, and you can say that okay, the basic talent of a dance artist is to be able to memorize a certain amount of choreography, stand at a certain play, place with balance, and be in unison with other uh, dance artists that are on stage with you, so that you can get movements across or visuals or pictures. Yeah. Right. But it's in the way that you do it that makes you excel. That's what makes people stand out. Yeah. So if you're saying you want a bunch of zombies and robots, yeah, for sure. But if you start wanting people like, you know, Deanna Matos yeah. working next aside, like right beside you or, you know, Monique Slaughter right. or you want somebody like Ryan Ramirez or Juliana Maldonado, right. like, bro, best believe you need to. You need to power up your 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 bossmanship and your kinmanship, your fellowship, because we are artists, and I think you can benefit a lot from us. So, absolutely. Yeah. And and in closing, if you could uh, leave a message right now for the next generation of dancers, mm -hmm. somebody right now, let's say if they're like just turning eighteen years old and they're trained and they want to enter the professional dance industry, if you have like one or two minutes to give them. Your advice. Sheesh. Pa package all that in. Like if you could never talk to them again and you only have two minutes to give them all the advice you possibly could for the industry, mm. go. Okay. Um, make sure you're entering with a solid foundation. Spiritually, if you do not stand for something, you are going to fall for absolutely everything. Like literally everything. Um knowing your values, writing them down and seeing them before you and having ways or boundaries for those values of, okay, if I had to, right? If I had to, if you look at yourself like an apartment mm -hmm. or somebody that's buying an apartment, there's always like that one thing that you're like, I really want the pool. Yeah. Like I was always that yeah. person like, I really want the pool. Yeah. <laughs> but if I got the pool, then maybe I don't have a patio. Right. Or if I got the pool, then maybe I don't have that extended kitchen right. island. You know, like there's always going to be something, some compromise, maybe yeah. some compromise, uh, unfortunately. And I wish that wasn't so. And hopefully I can make that change and other people can collectively make that change. But until that day, you know, you got to know, you should know what that is for you. Because if not, you're going to start sacrificing a lot. And that's going to be at the cost of not just yourself, but the people that come after you and the people that worked on it before you. And um, that's something that I was never, nobody ever educated me on that of like, look at how much work, you know, somebody did, you know, Dancers Alliance. Look how much work Dancers Alliance did to get to this. Or look how much work, you know, Kevin Stay did to, to make sure we had this. Or look how much work that, you know, I don't know, uh, uh, Brian Freeman did to, to get us to this, get us to this point of exposure right. or engagement. To appreciate that the to foundation. To appreciate that laid. foundation, to have respect for that foundation. And then also how you're going to carry on that legacy because that legacy is not just yourself. It's, it's the people that you, you know, collaborate with and that you're working with. It's all the people that, that get your message, you know? And that's like... Literally, as I'm, I'm making an imprint with whoever your podcast listeners are, but I'm making an imprint with myself right now. Yeah. I'm making an imprint with you right yes. now. I'm making an imprint on how the rest of my day is going to go. So really, everybody I come in contact with after I've had this experience, I'm making an imprint with. Yes. And it, it, that's, the, that's the thought. And I think the last thing would be... Um, don't ever sit down at a table that you're not willing to walk away from. I say that to like literally everybody. You should never put baby in a corner. 
<laughs> I love that. Man. Uh, well, um, was there an announcement that you wanted to share? Oh, snap. Okay, yeah. You were supposed to get the exclusive. Yeah. I'm sorry. We took like... I mean, I, I, I got time. I know you got I know go. we have a part two. Yeah. So if we, if we do have a part two, I'll wait until the part two. Yeah. But if we don't know if we have a part two, then I'll say it now. Why don't we just say it now and okay, then we'll expand it on it on part we'll two. We'll expand on it. Okay. Yes. Yes. I agree with that. Um, so um, you may have known this. You may not. But last last week, uh, I decided for my 30th birthday, um, which I'm secretly 21 still. Um, just putting that out there. <laughs> uh, but for my 30th birthday, I just really want to change for my dance community. It started with one grassroots uh, project that I wanted to help out and then along the week as the week went by um, and I started to locate the pulse of the global dance community I realized it was way bigger than just this one grassroots project and I started this GoFundMe to resurge the global dance community and I figured out what they need most is a space of information a platform where they can unify together and that they can receive mindset, not just knowledge, right? Because you can't do anything with knowledge until you have wisdom right. or understanding, right? right? So I am dedicating my platform and a TV show that I'm creating um, with a, a lot of friends that are down to volunteer and also get partially compensated for their time because I sure. don't really believe in a thousand percent <laughs> free volunteering work. Yeah, yeah. It's like, no, for the birds. Um, but uh, we are dedicating and devoting our precious performance investment um, towards making a better life for those around the world, other collectives. And the best way to do that is to provide them with the information, that's step one, and get them the content propaganda that they need. And then step two is to be able to attract, through that content, attract other sponsors so that we can develop more funding and distribute those to the collectives. Because this is for, for dancers. You're, for, talk, you're talking about dance a, artists. a yeah. resource this is center. A res I, I am going to be the resource center, but it's going to be like a platform. The show that we're creating is called Taj TV. Nice. And uh, yeah, we'll basically be putting together different content pieces of propaganda that can help advocate uh, in terms of provide the tools to advocate for yourself or on behalf of others. So the mission um, is to help solve the very problems that you're talking about. Absolutely. To, to be on the awareness, same page, to bring awareness. To let dancers know if you're going to be in the industry, you should watch out for these things. Yes. Right? You're gonna and, and you should also be on the same page as what some other people are doing, the solutions that they have. We're not just going to share about the problems or right. the concerns or the issues. We're also going to be providing solutions, bringing humor and healing because that's definitely something <laughs> we need, humor and healing at the same time relatability and just really the love support of the insight and yeah. that's all part of us unifying together because if we don't move together we can't change these things because somebody's always going to be off in the balance you know yeah. so we got to get balanced and so we have to develop an oprah for our our network yes. we have to develop a e-news yes. for our network we have to develop an extra or yes. a fallon for our network and I'm. I am taking on this ambitious adventure. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Taj and, TV uh, coming Taj soon. TV. Yeah, man. I mean, if you want to watch me for an hour, <laughs> so I be love it. that. <laughs> well, it seems like you really care. I do. Not it I seems. Do. I can tell. I can feel that you I really do. do care as a practitioner, as somebody who's reached a pinnacle. You're not just thinking about yourself, but you're thinking about the future generations. You know, and how you can support them continue doing this art form that we love doing but be treated fairly yeah because you're adding uh, dancers add so much value in so many ways to productions yeah. and it's not like you want to stop dancing we want to keep dancing no. we want to create even more we yes. want to bring even more <laughs> value to it it's not just saying gimme 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 it's like we're showing up help us show up even better even more prepared right it's like it's like when you see a school teacher have a part-time job it's like that's not right that's taken yeah. away from their ability to teach the kids. If they're doing such an important job, pay them enough to where they don't need a second job. Same thing with, with pilots. So true. They're, air, they're airplane pilots driving Uber. <laughs> yeah, like they only make like 30,000 a year to fly, no fly for like United or something. Like, oh, it's, it's crazy. It's like, it's very I thought low. pilots made. No, no? not the ones that fly the buses. 
private pilots maybe but you know i think any job that is important wow. as as you know as what you're talking about it, it you deserve to be compensated in a way that allows you to focus even more on the value that you're adding because now that you know new media is really media and soon it's going to be the metaverse like we're entering into a whole new phase of content yeah. experience in the yeah. world and we're also seeing now that dancers are also not just the people behind the stars you are the stars top, top, top. I, i've done class videos that have gotten more views than the actual videos yep yep you know so yep. there's definitely a market for it with no artist people just want to see the dancers so you can't just even say that the numbers aren't there no 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 people want to see it and you are championing this effort for dancers to get treated better and to upgrade the system of the industry absolutely to the next level i agree with that i agree with that you couldn't have said it better well i i support it <laughs> thank you you know I'm, I'm happy to share this message and however i can support the journey moving forward you let me know i will yeah i will yeah i'll take you up on that yeah absolutely <laughs> don't you worry I'll take you up on that. <laughs> taja thank you so much for joining thank us you. and uh do you have any last words of uh wisdom anything you want to end this on I know I kind of already did like three kind of outros, but I mean, <laughs> we keep getting into deeper yeah, passions sure. about it. I mean, I'll What's keep your it fi final line, final last words. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't necessarily need to change the move. You just may need to change your mindset. Mm. And Kaku, that's it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank and you. that's a wrap. Okay. Look, they can never keep me down, I'm going And if I ever fail, just know I'll go again I never quit, cause I know that every loss May lead to another win, I'm going no Who the best in this thing? Tell them, yeah, that's me Tell them, who bring the fire?